Hello once again, everyone, and welcome back to our Getting More Out of Angelo's uh, 10 Lessons series. So last week, or rather the week before, we went over the first lesson in which our recruit attacked our leg, defended his head, and um, we talked about the one-time counter option that kind of goes without saying. Now today we're going to be building upon that and now using the idea of defending our head with St. George while you're staying low. Now, when it comes to this particular play, uh, when we last left off, the idea was that he had attacked against my leg and I was using this number to hit him, right? His sword passes, I shift my leg back, I'm kind of free and clear. We discussed how with practice, he is able to attack my leg, prompt me to do this, and then raise up his guard in time to defend without necessarily shifting. If he can shift, great, then he can come back in with things. But that's not necessarily always the case. And certainly, after a little bit of practice, you will get quite good at being able to snap that guard back up to defend yourself. So, lesson two of Angelo begins and looks like this. We start to slope as always. We come out to the hanging, and he's going to attack my head. I attack his head, he attacks my leg, he stays down as I attack his head with a lunge again, he attacks my leg once more, I shift back, then he will shift back with his St. George, we return, we're done. So basically all we did was add one extra piece, right? Just one extra piece, but it's a strange piece because it looks very different than what we did before. Now in its just current form, it's a very, very good exercise, so here's that at more regular speed. Very good, good exercise. But let's talk about some things you can use this play for. So firstly, if it's someone that is prompted to do one-time counters very often, this can be a good way to catch them out. What that would look like, and I'll go ahead and be the uh, defender for this one, right? What that would look like is, of course, I attack his head, he attacks my head. Now I know that he's gonna be a person who, when I attack his leg, he's gonna try and slip back and cut my head. So I'm gonna go, okay, go ahead and start that cut with the express purpose of catching this, at which point, oftentimes, uh, people will kind of be stuck between guards or what have you. He may try to still recover his foot forward, or may even try to pass back. He may try to pull his arm back or things along those lines, all of which give me basically a free shot. Um, so this can be very good in that context. The next context that this can be used against is people that rebound. So what I mean by rebound is that with the shift, we want to make sure that we're keeping our weight kind of over our back leg, usually the knee slightly bent if we can, though we don't always do it perfectly. Another form of shift is to actually pass our leg back. But to do this, I'm keeping my weight square, once again, and just moving my leg out of the way. Both of these are fine. Um, another option would be for me to traverse backward, wherein I'm just taking my uh, front leg, so now I am standing square. All these will be done. Something you'll commonly see, though, is people that kind of panic when you cut their leg which would look like this, why don't you just throw a leg cut? And so their weight goes backward, which means that when they try to come forward with a cut again, they have to step back off of it. This is the rebound, as I call it, which can be sometimes very useful, right? So for example, if I were using this rebound in the context of trying to gain distance, so he cuts at me, I've gained some distance and I'm now using that energy as he recovers to launch out for something powerful, Sure, I have seen people use that very successfully. It's not the way I use it, but I have seen people use that successfully. The problem with the rebound is that once you're loaded, you're committed to coming forward once again. And especially if you've just narrowly avoided this first cut, and he just stays down to deal with whatever you throw at him, you're in a very bad position. As now, rather than shifting back to you know my preferred distance, he's still close enough to me to now launch an attack that I will have to either shift back out of the way to defend, or more likely, I'll defend and won't be able to properly protect myself, right? So this is a very good thing to draw out with it. So, now we're gonna go ahead and show the lesson with those two options. So the first option is I'm going to try and use the one-time counter. He will defend himself, having provoked a cut to the leg, and then take me wherever he sees fit. The second time, I'm going to rebound. He will stay down and defend, and then he can take me wherever he sees fit. So, here's what that'll look like. So first one will be the one-time counter. So, head. Head, uh-oh, and I'm in a really bad way, right? Especially if I try to pull back. Now, here's the rebound. Uh-oh, and I'm in a bad spot, right? And the more you can get comfortable with using that, 
the more you can make, you can really just confuse a lot of people and, and really exploit what this gives you. So, all that is to say, let's look at all of those next to each other. So, from, as for Angelo says it, Now with me doing the one-time counter. Good. And then me doing the rebound. Excellent. Good. And all that is is just some different things you can use that particular strategy with. Um, you can do a bunch of other things from it, but sticking close to Angelo's lesson is, is what the objective was, so we won't go into those right now. But next week, we're going to basically just add another piece to this and do the same on lesson four, um, which will be the week afterwards, and we'll just keep building. Like I said, I don't necessarily know 100% if this is what Angelo intended, but here are just some suggestions so you can get a little more out of Angelo's backsword. But my corniness aside, thank you very much for watching, and we'll go over some other techniques another time.